Hey, this is Asaf Levari from Nutinerf.com and it's time for another viewer request. And in this video we're gonna learn two Russian folk songs. We're gonna learn Kalinka and Katyusha. I bet most of you will recognize Kalinka because that's the quintessential Russian folk song. When you think Russian folk song, you think Kalinka. Now, um, I just want to mention before we begin that this lesson was a donation uh, by one of your fellow viewers. Uh, the guy purchased it as a private guitar lesson and told me, make it public, I want everyone to be able to learn this, so thank you. Um, now, I'm gonna play it first. They're both really short, really sweet, really melodic. Folk songs tend to be very fun to play. Um, and then we're gonna break it down lick by lick with tabs on the screen and everything. I'm gonna show you exactly how to play this. So, it goes like this. So let's begin with Kalinka. Now, for the A part, you only need to know two chords, E7 and A minor, okay? That's it. Now, the E7 um, is in this voice, with your pinky on the third fret of the second string, okay? On the D note. Now, that's the most important note of the melody. Okay? That's the note that the melody leads into. Now, um, so it's E7 and A minor. Now for the B part, you only need to know more simple chords. C, F, G, and for a second there, D5. D5 is D without playing the E string. Um, so, uh, as I told you, it's very simple. Let's begin. Put on the E7 chord, okay? Don't play it yet. Play the E string, the open E string. And then play the second string along with the third string and the bass, okay? Second, third, and sixth string together, okay? Second string on three, third string on one, and the open E bass. Now for the melody. 
the melody is this. Okay, it's just zero, one, two on the B string. Now, I harmonize it with the G string on one. Okay, with the G sharp note. Um, so it sounds like this. Okay, so what I do is I play the open B string along with one on the G string. Then I bar the first fret and I play both second and third strings um, on one. And then I add the pinky again on three and I play the same thing we played on the beginning, including the bass. Okay, so it's zero, one, three along with the bass. Okay, so this comes around twice. Um, and So, what we have so far is this. Now, you can add um, the, uh, the B note, the, the B bass note, um, on two on the A string if you want. You can do this. Right after the D note, uh, what I mean is this. Okay, um, this is an exaggeration, of course. Um, it's supposed to flow. If it doesn't flow, then let it go. It rhymed. Um, I didn't mean to. Um, anyway, so again. B. B, B, got it? That's where it's supposed to come in. You don't have to play it. Um, it sounds fine even without it. You can, you can use the same rhythm and play the E bass twice. Got it? Um, make your own arrangement of this. It's a folk song. It's supposed to be easy and fun to play. So um, just make your own decision as to what bass line you want to play here. Okay? I gave you um, three options. Anyway, let's finish the A part already. It's just one zero on the B string. And then put on the A minor chord and play... Uh, the A bass and the G string on two. And then the E string again. You can play it twice. Okay, that's how it usually goes uh, in, the, in the song. Um, you played the E string once at the beginning um, as an intro, and now it's part of the song, so it's... So you play the E string twice after the A minor chord and go back to the melody. And um, just like we added the B note, uh, you can add the E note inside the A minor chord. You can do this. Got it? You can add the second bass note of the chord. Um, so it will sound like this. Got it? Let's play it all together. By the way, we're done with the A part. Um, this repeats itself four times. part of Kalenka, the famous melody line. Um, so let's go over it um, a bit slower again. E string, E7, B note if you want. Zero, one, three with the bass, three with the bass, B note if you want. Again, zero, one, three, one, zero, two on the G string along with the A bass, second bass note of the A minor chord if you want and then 
E string twice, back to the beginning. You can make your own arrangement of this. You can uh, you can play with the melody line after you played it a couple of times. Uh, for example, mm, no, <laughs> the last one was off. Um, just add more notes. What I added was the C note, one on the B string between melody lines. What I did was something like this. Um, okay, I just added a few hammer-ons and pull-offs in between. Um, just play with it. Make your own arrangement. You can also add... Uh, more notes out of the scale. Um, just play with it, improvise, and have fun. Music is to be played with. Again, music is a living, breathing thing. Don't settle for just playing the melody uh, as it's written. Once you know it, you're allowed to do anything you want with it. Um, now, <clears throat> the B part. The B part goes like this. C... F, we're going over it first, I'm not teaching yet. C, F, C, G. Again, C, F, uh, C, G, F, D, D5, of course, because this is not D or D minor, it's D5. Um, and then G. That's the first ending. Then you play everything together and have a second ending, which is... And then... play with it and uh, play it in loops until the end of time. So the B part, C, just C, you play the chord, then you play the high G note, three on the E string with your pinky, then F, again you play the chord, it's not a barred F, even though you can do the barred F, it's still playing the chord. Uh, just instead of this bass note, you play this bass note. That's the only difference. Uh, the, uh, so you uh, decide on which F is more comfortable for you to play here. Doesn't matter, really. So C, high G note, 3 on the E string, F. Then open E string, 3 on the B string. Then uh, you play C again, but this time you only play the C bass. Uh, and the B string. Uh, and then the D string on two, and then G. Uh, you can just put on the bass note because what you play here uh, is the G string as your melody along with the G bass. And then you can play the D string as an additional note if you want. You can just play both G notes and stop. So it will sound like this. Or you can add a note. Okay? Your choice, again. So that's the first lick. It repeats itself twice. Um, I mean, it comes around twice, it repeats itself once. So, technically. Um, C. F. Open E string, 3 on the B string. C. D string. G. D string. Um, or you can play the A string on 2. 
It doesn't matter. It's an additional note. It's a background note. Uh, it's an accompaniment note. So uh, again, your choice. <laughs> additional notes between the melody lines um, and then um, F this time you bar it but um, you don't actually have to bar it because you're gonna need an open D string at the end of this lick so you can just put on the F chord without barring the first and second strings as well and you play this right? um, you play that G string along with the bass then you play strings 4, 3, and 2. Okay, got it? So it's... Okay, the, the D string is on 3, the G string is on 2, and an open B string. Then D5. And I suggest you leave your first finger free because you're gonna need this. Okay, so... You play uh, strings 2, 3, and 4 of the D chord, um, so it's D5, 3 on the B string, 2 on the G string, and then this cliche lick, okay, um, it's 1, hammer on to 3, pull off to 1 on the B string, then open B string, then two on the G string. So it's... Okay, it's one, three, one on the B string, open B string, G string on two. So it's... And leave the D bass ringing. Okay, the D bass is still playing. And then... The first ending. The first ending is very simple. It's just the same two G notes you played on the previous uh, lick. The G bass and the open G string. And then you just uh, play the bar in any way you want and finish on a full G chord. Okay, play the bar in any way you want. Fill it in any picking pattern you uh, deem appropriate. So it's... So again, okay, you only have uh, four notes to add, so it's, actually you have three notes to add because the fourth note is the G chord, so you only have three notes uh, in which to improvise, okay, that's, the, just play the G chord in any way you like, okay, so it's, both G notes, three notes, and then the G chord. Okay, you don't have to strum it, you can play it. Okay, so it's... Got it? Um, and then again. So let's play the B part again and finish with the second ending. Um, C. F, C, G, again, C, F, C, G, F without a bar, D5, let's play the first ending, G, and then let's skip the entire B part and get to the second ending, we've played the D5, and then this. Right? So it's G, and you play the, again, two G notes, but this time it's the high G note. It's three on the E string. So it's both E strings on three. And then uh, you can add. Again, another note, you can add the second G string or the B string, okay, or the G string. Um, 
Um, so it's on three, the E string, and then it's the E string on one, and then you put on an E chord and you play the um, same thing, which is both E strings and then a G string, and then you complete the seven, uh, the E7, uh, add the pinky on the D note again, you play that, and add the G string if you want, you don't have to, you can do this, okay, you can just play the chords. Again, it's your arrangement, okay? I'm just suggesting stuff I like to play. You don't have to play the way I do. Again, three, G. Three, one, this is G7, by the way. So it's three, one, E, E7. Okay, so it's G, G7, E, E7. play the E7 chord, wait a couple of hours, and then play this. Back to the A part. Okay? So, that's Kalinka. Fairly simple, right? Um, now, Let's move on to Katusha. But let's play Kalinka. Um, no, let's not play Kalinka. We've played it enough. Um, so, Katusha goes like this. Let's play, um, let's play the first line. Okay, just to remind you how it sounds. It sounds like this. first line okay um, and then comes the high part okay um, the chords you need to know for Katusha are D minor A played like this um, it's two fingers it's the second and third fingers on two and two on the second and third strings uh, because you need your first finger and pinky free for uh, this, okay? Okay, uh, you need to play the melody on the A chord, so that's the way to play it. Use your second and third fingers on two and two on the second and third strings. Okay, so you have D minor, you have A. Now, um... Then you're gonna have G minor. Now, G minor, you don't have to play the entire chord, you just have to bar the third fret because you're gonna need the pinky on six. Let's leave it at that for now. Um, and in the very near future, you're also gonna have A F shaped on, um, on five with the bass note on seven. So it's five, five, six, seven, okay? That's another voicing of A that we're going to use. Okay, so let's wait for a second and begin with the first line. The first line is this, D minor, you play the bass, then you play uh, the melody line. The melody line is very simple, it's just zero and one on the E string, so you can play the entire chord along with it. Okay? second melody line. The second melody line is still on D minor, so it's, okay, it's um, zero, one, one, zero on the E string, and then three on the B string. Okay, so again, you can, uh, you can choose when to play the chord. last note belongs to the A chord, so you can use the chord as your harmony 
all the time. Okay? And then turn this into A. Just take the third finger back a fret to two. And play strings one, two, three, and five for the A chord. And then you can, uh, you can play the G string as an emphasis. What do I mean? I mean... Okay? That's an emphasis. You don't have to. The melody note is just the open E string. Um, and then on the A chord, you play this. The bass again, then this. 0, 1, 3 on the E string. Again, you can harmonize with the chord. And then the second, uh, the second melody line of the A chord is this. It's 0, 3, 3, 1, 0 on the E string. Again, harmonize with the chord in any way you want. And then D minor. That's the first melody line. So D minor. A. Emphasis note. Then A. Zero, one, three. D minor. Now you play this. Leads you into the G, um, uh, the G minor chord. Okay, that's the next line. So, okay, um, you finished on D minor. Then play uh, zero one three five on the E string. Now five. Is being played along with the D bass again. Okay, just to emphasize that it's still on the D minor chord and to keep the rhythm going. So uh, you can slide, of course. And then 10, 8. And then it's 10, 8 again, and then 6 with the G minor chord. So it's... Okay? Now, the G minor chord is, again, as I said before, you bar the third fret, put your pinky on six on the E string, and that's what you pick. Strings one, two, three, and six. Okay? So, um, that's the next lick. It's okay. Uh, the the um, what I love about Katusha is that the melody notes um, they don't they don't stop at the end of the line. They immediately begin the next line. So you don't have. Uh, anywhere to stop and emphasize a melody note. The melody just continues and um, and integrates into the next line all the time. Okay, so... 5, 10, 8, 10, 8, G minor. Okay, 6 is your melody line. Um, and we're at the next melody already. We don't have uh, any note to stop on. So... Okay. The melody of the G minor chord is six six th uh, five three. Okay, so it's six six five three. You can use the pinky for the five, or use your third finger. Okay, whichever is more comfortable for you. And then you put on a D five chord with a high A note, which is this. This is. Um, the pinky on 5 on the E string, 3 on the B string, 2 on the G string. So it's 5, 3, 2, open D string. Okay, it's two A notes and two D notes. 
Mm-hmm. It's a D5 chord. Um, and what you play is this. You play the high A note, you play five on the E string along with the bass. And then play the second and third string. Okay? So it's... Um, okay? So, um, again, D minor. Five, ten, eight, eight with the bass. 10, 8, G minor, 6, 6, 5, 3, then D5, 5, 3 on the B string and 2 on the G strings. Okay? So what we have so far is this. In the A part now. The A part is on D minor, the B part is in D major. So, um, okay, which is G minor again, D5 again, and then A7, then D minor again, okay? But again, it doesn't rest there, it goes back to this. Um, okay? I played the A bass by mistake. Um, if you notice that, great ear. Um, so, the final melody line of the A part, it's G minor again, so you play the bass, and then three on the E string, it's in the bar, and then D5 with the high A again, or you can just play the D bass with five on the E string. Okay, works as well. If you want to play the entire chord, just, just play the entire chord. And then one on the E string, and then it's it's A7. So um, you can play it in a couple of different ways. The melody is it's three three one zero with the A bass. Now you can uh, play two on the B string and an open G string because this is G. Uh, this is it's a high. G uh, note and the low G note. So both G notes are the seventh note of the A chord and that creates an A7 chord. Um, or you can bar uh, both second and third strings for a second and then let it go. Or you can do this. Okay, put on the chord as you put it on before. Or you can put it on like this with your uh, first, second, and third fingers, and then you have to let it go again. Again, you have many, many choices. The best choice, of course, is to put on um, to put on this, <clears throat> the second and third fingers on the second and third strings as you played it before. But uh, you can uh, diversify and play this with the open G string and emphasize the seventh sound of the chord, <clears throat> but it's not supposed to be a seventh, uh, a strong seventh chord. It's supposed to be an A chord with, <clears throat> sorry, with the seventh on the melody. So it's supposed to be this, okay? With both uh, two and two, the second fret, on the second and third thing, um, strings with your second and third fingers. So that's the correct way to play. Again, it's your own arrangement. Do whatever you like. Uh, if you wanna play the strong seventh chord, 
it with the open G string, then do it. Okay, instead of this, which is a soft seventh chord. Um, or the simplest thing, you can just play the A bass and play the melody. Okay? You can choose that as well. Um, it's a matter of choice, it's a matter of preference. So, uh, the final line, and it ends on D minor. Okay? And the melody note is the B string on 3. Okay? Uh, so play a D5. Put on a D minor chord and play a D5. Play strings 2, 3, and 4. Okay, that's the final melody note of the A part. Uh, so the final line again is G minor 3. It's 6, 3, D5, 1 on the E string, then um, A with. 3, 3, 1, 0 on the E string. I don't think I said the 1, 0 before. So it's 3, 3, 1, 0. That's the melody. And then D5. Okay, but it doesn't end there. You jump right away back to... Okay, so it's and you play it again. The whole thing. Now pay attention. You end on D, D major, because at the end of the A part begins the B part. Um, the motif of this uh, of this song is that at the end of each melody line begins the next melody line. They um, um, they integrate really well together. You don't have time to rest. The, the melody doesn't end anywhere. It just moves on to the next melody immediately. Okay, so uh, let's play the A part again. D minor. That's the A part. Now, the B part, um, again, um, just like Kalinka, you have a B part and you have two endings. You have a melody and then you have the first ending, and then you have a melody and then you have a second ending. Okay? So the first melody is this. Oh, by the way, um, before I play this, I just want to mention that the B part. I did not arrange the B part. Uh, the B part belongs to Igor Presnyakov's arrangement. Um, he, if you don't know who Igor Presnyakov is, he is an amazing guitar player and arranger. Um, go listen to him after you learn this. Um, this is his arrangement. The, um, 
the B part of Katusha is entirely his. Um, I've made a couple of minor changes, but this is, I don't take credit for this. This is Igor's arrangement. Just wanted to be clear. Okay? Um, so, uh, the B part. Okay, that's the first ending. Now the second time. And it goes right back to the A part. Okay? So the D part, the D part, the B part begins with D. Uh, because you're already on D, and the, the solo is being played in thirds, okay? Thirds meaning... Okay, it's the scale played in thirds. Now let's go over those thirds. The first third is... Uh, you're gonna be sick of that word once uh, we go over all this. The first third is two and three on the first and second strings. It's inside the D chord. Then it's three and five. Okay? Then it's five and seven. Then it's seven and eight. Then it's nine and ten. And then it's ten and twelve. Okay? So it's two and three, three and five, seven and nine, uh, five and seven. 7 and 8, 9 and 10, 10 and 12, okay? So, um, you play it first in sequence, okay? And you can play the D bass along with them. You play the D chord, then you play the second, third, you play 3 and 5, then you play 5 and 7. And then you have a solo. The solo is... Okay, but in your mind, uh, you only pay attention to this. Because the positions of the thirds should come naturally after you practice this. Okay, and I suggest that once you practice this, um, you begin to play uh, uh, to play around with this, and that way you're gonna uh, implement the positions into your fingers. Okay, just try to play along uh, with yourself and try to invent melodies using the thirds. Okay, try to play with them in as many ways as possible to learn how they go together. Okay, so um, again, the B part. Okay, so it's two, three, five, then seven, five, seven, nine, ten, ten, five. Okay, just the E string. Okay, the harmonies should be automatic. Um, that's the that's the um, melody. Then, okay, that's time for the A the high A I showed you way earlier. F shaped on five, 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 six, seven. Okay, with the A bass. So this time it's the bass, and then you play the chord, and seven, nine on the E string. And then um, it's first ending. It's seven, 
Then hammer on and pull off from 5 to 7 to 5 with the A bass. Then the same thing from 3 to 5 to 3. Then D. Okay? So that's the first round of the B part. Okay, and then A. Um, again, the A bass. 7, 9, 7, D. And then the D, uh, the D line again. Then the second ending, which is A again, bass A. This time it's 7, 5 instead of 7, 9. And then it's um, okay, so it's um, seven nine seven with the bass on nine. Then ten and eight on the B string. Then D. Then hammer on from uh, hammer on and pull off from zero to two to zero on the D uh, on the E string this is a bit confusing so again uh, if I'm confused then maybe you're confused so let's go over this again okay it's a seven five seven nine seven ten and eight on the B string D hammer on from zero to two and then pull off again. Hammer on, pull off from zero to two to zero on the E string, then D again. And then right away, the A part. Okay, you begin right away with the melody, zero one. Okay, so it sounds like this. Um, That's it with Katusha. You're done with that as well. Um, so let's play the B part. times as you want until the end of eternity. Before you go, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I upload a new lesson every couple of days or so. Hopefully, sometimes, uh, sometimes I don't have time to make them. But uh, go to the website, download the tab. It's for free, just like this lesson is for free. Uh, everything on Lick and Riff is for free, but there's a donation button if you want to help me produce more lessons and make time to produce those lessons and make the arrangements. Um, I'm planning on a beginner series very, very soon, so if you can um, support Lick and Riff and want to help me with that, I'd be grateful for any donation whatsoever. So click the donation button and give whatever you want to give back. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this. Go get it on your fingers. These two songs are terrific melodies. Russian songs are... Uh, Russian musicians in general are awesome musicians. Um, Igor Presnyakov included. Um, just go have fun with this. Make your own arrangement. Remember, it's you who's playing it, so play it how you want to play it. And I will see you in the next lesson. Thank you very much for watching, and again, to the guy who bought this, thank you. We all thank you. So, have fun, and I'll see you in the next lesson.